What are the five best northern suburbs of Indianapolis? Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate, and I'm giving you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. So what are the five best northern suburbs of Indianapolis? But first, why did I point these out? Well, if you're relocating here and working in an office, guess what? The Water Cooler Committee, they're gonna tell you the best, the very best is, drum roll, Carmel, Indiana. They might even say it in terms like this. You have to, you just gotta. There's no place else, it's the best. It's 15 miles north of downtown Indianapolis. You can get most anywhere from there, but most likely they'll brag about two things. One is the roundabout. At last count, there were 150 roundabouts. Now, if you don't like roundabouts, don't move to Carmel, Indiana. Number two, the schools. They're one of the state's top 20 high schools academically. And it's a big high school. This weekend, my wife Lynn, her daughter Angie and family are coming to see us. And she was on the uh, Carmel soccer teams. And she was part of a team that won four state titles. I mean, she has four rings. She's running out of fingers for state championship rings. When it comes to athletics and extracurricular activities, it has a tradition of winning state titles lots of them. There's 100,000 people and counting, and it's the state's wealthiest city and in the wealthiest county. Well, it can mean a lot of things, but it does mean homes can be pricey. However, last weekend we were out boating with the guys that I go to Canada fishing with, and they all brought their wives and girlfriends, and there was a young gal there, a young single nurse, and she just bought her first home in Carmel. It's not like everything is multi-multi-million, but uh, there are a lot of really nice homes, but there are at different price points. Okay, a couple highlights about Carmel. There's jobs. It's home to over 40 corporation headquarters. There's the Palladium Center for the Performing Arts where top acts can be routinely seen. And the Saturday Farmer's Market has a really good vibe. It's one of the nicest farmer's markets around. And then you have the Arts and Design Center around Main Street. It's a very walkable neighborhood and it attracts people from outside to frequent the shops, the restaurants, and the friends that they have that live there. I have my faves there, including Juniper's with its Charleston menu and vibe. You know, I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna wanna pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Number two is Carmel's neighbor to the north. Westfield. It's 58,000 people and growing swiftly. That growth equals new construction. Lots of it. Houses, businesses, roads. If you don't like new construction, you don't want to move to Westfield. On the other hand, if you like that growth vibe, hey, it is a great place. Now, new construction is pricey, so the home prices are going up. Nevertheless, Money Magazine ranked Westfield a top 10 place to live, and US News rated it one of the top 10 healthiest communities in America. Now, the negative is a lack of walkability. In fact, there is no downtown, but it does boast Grand Park. It's a 400 acre campus with 31 fields, 26 ball diamonds, and three large indoor complexes. It's the home of the NFL Colts training camp, and it's a host of too many youth sporting events to count. Number three, moving directly to the east, you'll find Noblesville. It doesn't get the press, and the residents, they are just fine with that. If you want a little less keeping up with the Joneses, then hey, Noblesville may be the place for you. There's 70,000 residents, state highways 32 and 37 run through it, and there's easy access to everywhere. There's lots of jobs in surrounding areas in Carmel and Fishers and Castleton. The household income is above the national average, but it is less than Carmel and Westfield. That means their homes are more affordable. Not that there's not multi-million dollar homes, but $300,000 goes a long, long way. In fact, just last week, I sold a 2,700 square foot Cape Cod in very good shape for $370,000. Couple other things. It's the county seat. It makes the list of the state's top 20 high schools. Ruoff Music Center has outdoor concerts all summer long and into the fall with a constant string of national big name acts. My favorite is Morse Lake. It's got the best boat ramps around. It's got 17 miles of shoreline. You can just putz around and do a home tour. There's a couple of boat up restaurants we really like, Swan Dive and Woofies. They're great places to hang out. Hey, and you can bet 
I'll be there again this weekend. Number four, moving clockwise a little further east is Fishers. It's very fast growing. In 1960, it had 350 people. And even 30 years ago, it was only 7,500. But today, it's 95,000. That's fast growth. One of the things that's fueled the fast growth is there's lots of jobs. The household income is on par with, say, Carmel and Westfield. And like other towns in Hamilton County, it benefits from being the close proximity to each of the other ones for amenities. But it has some of its own. There's Connor Prairie, which is a regional attraction. And then there's Top Golf, that place where you go and you make sure you have a, a drink in your hand so you have an excuse why you missed the ball. Then there's the recently developed uh, shopping and restaurant districts. The Yard, it's got a bunch of restaurants I like, but one I always get a kick out of is Portillo's. Well, now they've got like 30 or 40 or I don't know how many restaurants throughout the Midwest. There's also the Nickel Plate District, which was named for a restaurant that had been there forever called the Nickel Plate. And now it's been built up all around it with other restaurants and shops and offices and a lot of housing. So it's very walkable neighborhood. And then finally, there's Geist Reservoir. It's very busy on the weekends, uh, lots and lots of boaters. Uh, they have fishing tournaments there all the time. And uh, you can do the million dollar home tour. Actually, you could do the million dollar home tour about 30 years ago. Now it's multi, multi million dollar homes. Okay, rounding out our top five, we're going to cross the county line into Madison County to a quaint little town of Pendleton. There's only 4,800 residents. It is slow growing, but it has job opportunities along uh, nearby I-69. Its schools are the best in the county, so it serves as a magnet for the people in Madison County. It's way more affordable than the other towns that we've been talking about, and it's got land available that you can build on and for a fraction of the cost. It's got a charming downtown with one of my favorite restaurants. It's Catello's Italian Art Casino. So if you're looking for a smaller, quieter option, Pendleton might be on your radar. Okay, there you have my picks for the best five northern suburbs of Indianapolis. You know, I can't tell you the ins and outs of every neighborhood in all of those towns. I'm just not that guy. But 10 to 15 years ago, I was hired by the Wall Street banks and investment firms to do their due diligence work. I looked at everything from hotels to apartment complexes to manufacturing plants from skyscrapers to mammoth logistics centers. My job was to go in, find out what the story was, and then tell them what they needed to be done. So if the Wall Street money trusted me to do that all across the United States and Canada, then I hope you'll believe me when I say I can walk into a neighborhood and get it figured out so that you can get the best deal possible. Hey, if you'd like to know everything there is to know about moving to or living in the greater Indianapolis area, then be sure to tune in every Tuesday as we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. Then on Thursday, we walk through existing homes for sale. And then on the weekend, we take a look at what it's like to actually live in Indiana. Now keep in mind, whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this helpful, you'll love this next video. Watch this one right now.